In this video, we are going to have a quick look at Yamaha consoles and setting them up in a small show environment. Um, before we get onto the technical setup, let's just talk about some of the different consoles we have here. So um, behind me, I have a Yamaha QL5 and just in front of me, a QL1. Uh, they're from the same series, but obviously one is a lot smaller than the other. Um, if you have a show where you need a lot of faders or a lot of local inputs, then the QL5 is the way to go. If you don't need so many inputs or uh, so many faders available to you, then the QL1 is great because it's got a really small footprint. Um, the other Yamaha consoles we use are the CL series. You might see a CL3 or a CL5. These consoles don't have so many local inputs. They're designed to be used with lots of remote stage boxes. But what they lack, up, lack in remote inputs, they make up for in processing power. So they have more rack slots available for EQs and effects, things like that. And they also have more mix buses available. So if you have a lot of outputs you need to mix. Say you're mixing a band who needs stereo in-ear monitors and there's 10 band members, so that's gonna be 20 mix channels. Um, the QLs only have 16 available, the CLs have 24. So uh, that would be why you might see a CL on a bigger show. These consoles are a lot more powerful. So the Allen Heath series, the, the QU and the SQ series, they're great. Um, they do what they need to do. They're great on a really small show. But if you've got a big show that needs a lot of remote inputs um, from say stage and the other side of stage and video world, then the Yamaha console and the Dante networking that comes with it is the way to go. It's way more flexible, way more powerful, um, but it's just a bit more involved in setting up. So what we're going to do now is jump into setting up a QL1 with a Rio stage box. Uh, the first thing we want to do um, is factory reset our console. This makes sure that any previous Dante settings uh, are wiped out and we're starting with a blank canvas. So to do this, as I switch on the console, I'm going to hold down the select keys of the A and B channels on the far right of the console. Uh, I'm going to keep holding these down. This takes a little while, but the console is just running through its boot up process. And now I'm on this screen, I can release these keys and uh, the system will continue to do the factory reset. So we'll just wait a couple of minutes now for this to happen. This particular desk is a QL1, but this process is the same for all of the QL and all of the CL consoles. Okay, so our factory initialization has completed. Um, so we've got a confirmation window here on the screen. So I'm gonna close that. Uh, what we want to do now is to go to the setup page of our console and Dante setup. Now you'll see on this screen lots of information. Um, what we're looking at primarily here is this little window in the top right that says system and sync. And we've got, you see a green light here and an orange light flashing with a yellow triangle as a warning sign. Um, this is telling me that something's wrong with my Dante network. Uh, the main problem here is I haven't actually connected anything together yet. So if I just tap this, Dante port does not have connection. It tells me at the bottom, so nothing's connected. Um, with a Dante network, there's two ways of running it. Um, as you can see under secondary port here, daisy chain and redundant. The desk defaults to daisy chain, which means um, exactly as it says, I can just daisy chain through all of my devices and uh, link them together like that. Um, that's great because it's a really quick setup, but it doesn't give you any sort of redundancy um, if there are any issues. So what we want to do is select redundant. Um, Scary looking red box here, but it's just telling me that once I change this setting, the uh, audio module in the desk is gonna reboot, so we'll lose audio. So this isn't something you wanna do during a show, you wanna do this at the start. So I'm gonna press apply now. Okay. And now it's just gonna take a moment to do that. Okay, now we've rebooted. Um, so the desk is in redundant mode. Um, although as you can see, we've still got this little warning triangle here because we're not actually connected to anything. So on the back of the console, we have two ports, primary and secondary. Um, and in this particular rack I have here, I have a network switch, as uh, a managed switch that's set up to have a primary and secondary network run through it. So what I'm going to do is take two network cables, connect one from the primary output of the console into the primary network port on the 
switch and one from the secondary on the console to secondary on the switch. So now we're connected to our switch, you'll see that we still have this yellow warning triangle. That's because there aren't any other devices on the network at the moment. Um, so the desk still isn't connecting to any other devices, so it's still telling me to a connection error. Uh, you will have noticed when I connected those cables that these lights in this um, information window here are mirrored on the back of the console above the network ports. Um, so what we want to do next is to connect our Rio head amp unit to the console. So I'm going to power my Rio on, just wait for it to boot up. So the older Rios will have just a rotary switch to set the ID on them, but this one's a bit more advanced and it gives you lots of control over the, all of the individual input ports. So this one is booted up onto the setup page. You can see here unit ID Y001. I'm going to leave that as it is, you'll see why later. Um, and secondary port is set to redundant. We want to make sure this is the same as our console, so redundant is what we want. If I wanted to change any of these settings, I would just click the control wheel here and then I can scroll through all of the options and I can click through the other, other options here. Um, if your Rio doesn't boot up onto this page, then to get to it, we just need to press these two keys at the same time and that will let me scroll through all of the information until I get to the setup page. Uh, you'll see on the console now I have two green LEDs, one solid and one blinking, so uh, we can see that we're connected properly. And it's just a little pop-up here saying that the console is acting as a work clock master. We haven't got an external work clock, that's all being done from the console. Uh, but we don't need to change those settings, they're happy as they are for now. What I'm going to do now is go to the second tab on this screen which says device mount. And you'll see here there are three slots filled already with virtual devices. This is the default that this console gives you when you boot it up. So the top two are Rio 3224s and the bottom one is Dante Virtual Soundcard. Um, you'll see here that the, the top Rio is ID'd as number one. That's why I left the Rio we have here as it is because it's already, already set. So what I'm going to do now is select slot one, go to device list, and we can see that our Rio is online. Uh, I'm going to select OK and then just refresh and in a moment we should be connected. There we go, so we've got our confirmation message that the device number one has been connected. The next thing we need to do is go to this menu here which is IO device uh, and now we can see um, a simulation of the front panel of this Rio. Um, we can see that it's controllable and the connection is all good as indicated by these lights here. So now we can connect all of our sources to this Rio but at the moment the desk won't be able to pick them up. That's because if we think of Dante as like a motorway that's carrying all of this signal to and from the Rio and the desk, uh, we need to tell the Rio essentially where to get on and where to get off at the console. So I'm going to go to Dante Patch and Dante Input Patch and we'll see here that um, all of these slots, these 32 Dante channels, have the inputs of unit ID 1 connected to them. So um, it's quite small but you should be able to see on each channel we've got a big number at the bottom which is the channel name, the channel number rather. Um, and this little ID at the top is the device ID, so Y001, that's our Rio, and 001, that's channel one. Um, so at the moment, each of these um, Rio inputs is set to go to the, um, the same number Dante channel. If we had a, an additional device, um, we may want to patch these differently. If I just click on this, I can show you what options we get. So if we wanted, say, uh, a second Rio connected, which we don't have, but we have the, the virtual device in, I can go down to Y002, that's the other Rio, input one. Now, input one from that second virtual Rio is, connect, is transmitting on Dante channel one. 
So if we tell the desk to listen to Dante Channel 1, it will be picking up the signal from that second Rio. So now, in theory, if I go to my input channel, this is channel 1, and I'm going to change my source to Dante 1, and you can see here I'm pulling, when I select Dante 1 here, I'm pulling from Rio number 1, channel number 1. Um, so now I have control of that source from that Rio. Uh, just to demonstrate this, if I put phantom power on on this channel, when I go to the I.O. device page and have a look at this Rio, you can see phantom is on on that first channel, so I'm controlling that. Uh, the last thing we want to do will be to set our output ports. So I'm going to go to Dante Patch again, output port setup. Um, at the moment, from the console, uh, Dante output port 1 is mix 1, Dante 2 is mix 2, etc. You can see how everything's set there. Um, what I need to do is patch those output ports to the ports on the Rio. So if I go back to I.O. and click here, here we have uh, an overview of all the output ports on the Rio. So there's um, 16 analog and 8 AES-OVU digital channels. Um, at the moment they're set so Dante 1 is going to output 1, Dante 2 is going to output 2 etc. If I want to change this it's the same as changing the input source. I just select that port and I say actually I want you to listen to Dante channel 25. So. And there we go. Uh, we should be all ready now to patch our inputs and outputs and to set up our show.